Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello there, everybody. This is Rob Scribner. This is episode 83. And uh, I witnessed, I swear, the strangest thing I've ever seen in an RV. And I'm going to share that with you. So I have an unbelievable story. <laughs> and uh, I have a friend of mine that is a RV repair person. Mo- he has a mobile RV business uh, over uh, in Fountain Hills area. And... Uh, uh, In fact, it's called Diversified RV Repair. And uh, my friend Todd um, has always got work to do. He um, services pretty much every, you know, a lot of rigs out of uh, Eagle View RV Resort. And so uh, I had to go out there and we have our RV and storage near there. So I did what we had to do. I was, like I told you, since it's Arizona, I go and I actually keep water in the sink in a bowl to keep moisture in the in the RV because of the hot weather which is just the opposite of what you would do in the northwest <laughs> but so anyway <laughs> you still won't believe this so I go over to the park and see if I can catch up with Todd and his wife to say hello and uh, I get there and uh, his wife came out of the RV and said hello and says Oh, you won't believe it. Todd's having a terrible day. And I, I actually, he was right across the street working at another person's rig. Now, what he was working on was a open range, um, ultra light fifth wheel or light. They called it, uh, fifth wheel is about 22 feet. I would guess something like that. Um, fairly new. I think it was 2015 or 16. And it was a beautiful rig and, uh, you know, not gigantic, but a nice fifth wheel, nice and comfortable. And Todd's, um, over on the other side of it, uh, working on this in the septic tank area or the, uh, black tank thing. And what he was doing was, uh, doing a black, uh, black tank, um, uh, pressurized cleaning. And I've had that done in my RV. In fact, we had a video about that. And what he does is he has a high pressure sprayer that um, goes in and um, sprays like crazy, and it's a high, you know, super high pressure. So when it goes in, it just uh, goes berserk. So it has pressure sprayers shooting back from the head, which makes it want to go forward. If that makes sense to you. And uh, so anyhow, so his frustration was that his hose got stuck which you would think in a black tank you know just bouncing around in there shooting around and cleaning things out that what's it gonna get stuck on (laughs) he's like he's like that's that's ridiculous how can it possibly be stuck in a black tank so uh, I walked around there and and, uh, uh, <laughs> and there he is trying to get his hose out, tugging and pulling, and, and it is not coming out. And if you if you take a flashlight into the and look into the pipe, you can see almost directly into the black tank, and you can literally see the hose wrapped up or lasso, lassoed around something. So here's the deal, and I I was really surprised. And so Todd's not one to just like what the you know just what's going on. He um, immediately goes to uh, the manufacturer of, and I think this was made by uh, I'm not sure who it was made for, by but anyway he pulled up the manufacturing PDFs of the particular tank, which was about a 38 40 gallon tank, to figure out. What could this hose be possibly connected to or wrapped around and tied up on? And it turns out, and this is the strangest thing I've ever seen, is 
the tank that's in that RV has a kind of a, like a hole that goes through it in the middle, which I believe they use that to put a bracket through that give the tank more uh, support. So it's not a hollow tank. It's a tank with this column going through the middle of it, which I'm in, I'm pretty sure is, um, has a bracket or something goes through it. <clears throat> that uh, allows it to be connected at the bottom. So you, you know, cause tanks, that's one of the biggest problems in RVs is they move and shake and then pipes crack and then you have problems with your plumbing and tanks are always having problems. So I think that might be one of the solutions of how to um, strap down a, a tank of any sort better than what they've done in the past. The only problem is with this is when this uh, he used his high pressure sprayer to go in and flush the tank, not knowing that that existed. His you know because it shoots backwards and makes it propel forward, the thing wrapped around this column in the middle of the tank and literally lassoed itself in the middle of that tank <laughs> and. It was really stuck. I mean, we even took a, a pipe type uh, thing and went in there and tried to lodge it, you know, dislodge it and stuff. It was not coming off. And it's what a shame because <clears throat> the only option they had after an hour and a half of trying to find a way to get this hose out of there is to cut it off and just leave it in there. Um, because if they got into the tank or damn, you know, cut a hole in the tank to get it out of there then you know it's a newer rv it would uh cause a warranty you know uh, the warranty wouldn't be any good on it so the only thing you know this guy is in an rv park and we need this septic to work so the only option they had was cut the hose off and leave it in the tank because there was just no getting that thing off and i even helped him you know uh, yeah, not many people would volunteer to help with a black tank issue, but uh, so we went in there and uh, I tried to you know hold lights or hold a, and tried to pry that thing off with a, a bar and all that stuff and it was not coming out and I just I was shocked. The last thing I would ever expect was a column going through the middle of that tank. So um, that's really important for people out there if you've got a I don't know what other RVs are using that model of tank, but you need to know that because if you go to RV parks and, and you're sitting a long time, it's always a good idea to get your black tanks uh, rinsed out or cleaned out because, you know, things build up in them. And so <laughs> um, if you have that, you need to let the person know uh, that's cleaning your tank that that exists because it could easily happen where uh, a high pressure sprayer shooting around in your tank will wrap around that and actually tie itself off. And then you're, if the only option is, is to leave the a cut off hose in there, that's not exactly what the tank is designed for. Um, but yeah, it's, um, uh, I was just surprised. I just, I, I could see them doing that with gray water and regular water tanks, but a black tank that people have, flushed out with tools like that i'm not sure if that was the best design at all because uh, um but anyway uh you if you have a newer rv especially if you have an open range check and see if your tanks have that column going through the center especially your black tank because it may come a time that you want to flush or have your black tank flushed out and that is, I mean, I know you go, well, that's the guy cleaning its problem. Well, it becomes your problem if they got to cut their hose off and leave it in there. So you really should know that. And if that happens and you need to let the person know so they can be very lenient about how they let the hose come into that tank and prevent that from happening. I, I, I mean, I think you could still get your tank rinsed out, but you just can't let the hose go berserk inside the tank because, um, it will wrap around that column and it could lasso itself. So I just thought that was truly amazing. And, and 
Um, I'd love to hear comments from you guys that may have heard more about this. But uh, if you're going like, um, you know, uh, you're a snowbird or something and you're sitting for four or five months down in one area, uh, you could have issues with your black tank where it might be a good idea to have it rinsed out. And uh, I think it's a good idea if you get the chance to pull down the manufacturing PDF of what kind of tanks you have and see if you actually have that column design. It could really be a problem. So, yeah, there you go. I learned something new. I hope you did too. It's also getting kind of clear that the snowbirds are starting to drift their way back home. Now, from my understanding, it's still a little bit rough in the weather up in the northwest. But, uh, yeah, when I've been gone for a couple of weeks from the park that we we're in. And it's like, oh, there's a couple of open spaces here. So the migration is starting to happen. All the snowbirds are starting to think about or already started heading back home. And uh, some of them probably are probably taking their time um, and not just going straight home and and kind of following the weather a little bit as it improves throughout you know the sp spring and summer. So uh, yeah, it's um, uh, the old phenomenon of the of the snowbirds is coming to an end like normal. And uh, sometimes I think it's refreshing for the RV parks and all the people to kind of uh, get a you know, handle on their RV parks. At the same time, it's kind of sad because, you know, uh, people that own those RV parks, that you know, their income drops and stuff. But with good planning and if you have experience owning an RV park and resort, um, you, you know, you put your money away for a rainy day type thing and uh, and they're prepared for it and and. It's their opportunity to work on the park and do things that they want to during the seasons. At the same time, the ones up north, up north are starting to gear up, getting ready for the, either the snowbirds to come up um, or what we call sunbirds. So the opposite phenomenon happens here. When it starts getting hot, which we're a little bit early yet, then people in the south or southwest will start drifting their way up north because they're escaping the extreme heat. You, uh, snowbirds were escaping the cold, rainy, and, and snowy weather in certain areas. And, uh, and it's also very amazing how many people from Colorado come over here in Arizona. Um, you would think it'd be a lot more Oregon and Washington, but it's really a, um, a lot of, oh man, I mean a lot of people from Colorado. And so, yeah, they're all starting to think about drifting back. Still a little bit early in some cases, depending what state you're from. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting to watch how the snowbirds and the sunbirds work. And uh, like, like I was telling some people, I've told people about this before, but I met a lot of sunbirds that instead of hauling their RV all the way up to the northwest, a lot of them already have it up there. <laughs> which is kind of weird. So like in Anacortes, Washington, I met three people at, um, and I'm sure there was a lot more. They put their RV in storage up there. And so all they do is, uh, they start getting ready and say, okay, we're going to go up on May 1st. So they con contact a transport company, which is really a guy with a, uh, a pickup and a bond. And, uh, hopefully <laughs> make sure they do by the way, and that they're insured. Anyway, so uh, they will go to the storage unit, meet you know, meet the transport guy, and the owners of the RV have made arrangements already in the RV park somewhere up the north, you know, and uh, they'll pull the RV out, haul it to that RV park. The guy sets it up for him, backs it in there, and and voila, they uh, their RV's all set up for him. They didn't have to haul it all the way from Arizona. And they could, you know, they didn't have to drive a truck. They would probably drive in their just family car. And so that's a little bit of a, you know, a cost savings right there alone. So, uh, the only problem is, is like you discover anything that might have gone wrong during the winter. Like, you know, maybe a, a, a mouse moved in or something. <laughs> it happens. But, uh, yeah, it's a good setup. And so, uh, basically, they just go to summer in about September, October, uh, sometimes in November, they'll uh, call the transport company again, and they'll come out. Costs about a hundred and fifty bucks, probably like that. Some, and that might be a little high. And they just haul it down to the uh, storage unit again, and uh, 
and put it away and they kind of just make sure it's all winterized and ready to go and um, all set up so they can come back next year so yeah it's a it's a great it's a great process and uh it's a great way to do that kind of traveling and, and save money by not having to haul your rig so far because you're looking at a good 15 to 1700 miles just from here to washington so yeah that's a long drive i think if uh sherry wasn't working we probably still have another seven years or so before we get in our middle 60s before we could actually go on social security and stuff uh i'd do that <laughs> i'd do that in a heartbeat but Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen. And so uh, one of the things I was going to tell you about in our next uh, module here is Sherry and I have begun the process of RV shopping. I thought I'd tell you a little bit about it. First of all, it seems very amazing of just how many RV shows are down here in Arizona. It must be their kind of last ditch effort before the um, weather gets too hot. So uh, the thing down here, when you look at RVs, is when the weather starts getting in the 90s and hitting 100 and stuff like that, and you start hopping from RV to RV, and they're not, and they're just sitting in the parking lots and stuff. Uh, first of all, you better be taking a lot of water with you, and two, some of those RVs are pretty toasty warm, and so it can tucker you out very fast. So I think we always seeing is kind of this last ditch effort for the RV par um, companies down here in Arizona to put their you know, rigs on sale and stuff because things are going to slow down for them uh, in the summer, which is just the opposite up north. So, uh, of course, there's no lack of RV shows. So, of course, Sherry and I, uh, they had one over um, in Gilbert, Arizona. And so we thought, well, let's go stop in. And it was actually not too bad a show. There's quite a few rigs there. And uh, it's so funny to always... Be look, you know, all we could think about before was how big we could get before it was getting ridiculous. And now we're kind of like, how small can we get without being ridiculous? Because, you know, we have to consider a couple things. One is pets and we have a large dog. So we want that to be comfortable. Two, uh, we still like, we'd like to, and I don't think we're going to get it in a smaller unit, a king size bed. Just because, not because <laughs> Sherry and I probably need to, you know, quit eating out so much. But uh, we also seem to have a chocolate labs share the bed with us all the time. And uh, I got a feeling that ain't going to happen. Because it looks like the best you can do is uh, maybe a queen. But normally it's more like a double type size of beds in these uh, smaller units. And so we're, we're kind of, we're looking at trailers. But they're just, I don't know. It's, I think it'd be nice to give my truck a break. And I, I've told you I have a very nice truck that I'm very happy with. It's a 2002 Ford one ton dually and uh, it's operating well. And it's actually broken 200,000 miles, but it's the last of the 7.3 liter diesel. And for those of you who know your trucks, you know that that's a, that's a special truck. And I like to keep it till I die. <laughs> So, uh, I've heard people saying they're hit 300 and 400,000 miles on those trucks. So I'm going for it. So, and it's all paid for and I don't want to buy another truck cause that's a, that's like buying another fifth wheel, man. The price of a dually, um, one ton. Oh my gosh. Uh, they're really up there. So what we're kind of looking at is, wouldn't it be nice to have something that we could just leave the rigs at home if we really truly had to have a car, we could get a little dolly and haul a little Mazda 3. It's very light. And I think if I found a rig that tows up to 5,000 pounds, I think I'd be safe with, and you guys can leave comments and let me know if I'm wrong, but I think I wouldn't have any trouble towing a Mazda 3 on a dolly. Uh, um, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'd have to check into that, but we've been kind of looking at not net well class c's and some of these um modified uh class c's they look more streamlined like thor makes kind of a cool little class c type thing and there's some other ones uh, i can't remember all the names even open range uh made some um i can't i mean i'm still learning the brands and stuff but 
we're finding that between, I'm thinking, 22 to 26 foot Class C's um, would be comfortable enough for Sherry and I. If anything larger than that, and it doesn't make the sense of what we're trying to do, is we want to, because we know that if you're going in a Class C, uh, that's also your transportation. So if you're in a town and you need to go to the grocery store or something like that, you want a rig that's very easy to um, put away and go to the store with if you're not taking a towable rig with you, a car with you. So we want a rig like that that is fairly comfortable but at the same time breaks down easily to be our transportation. And so that's kind of the goal. And so as time goes on, we'll kind of start cinching this down, but we probably won't be trying to do this till the fall. I think the only bad thing I'm seeing is the prices of them are about the price of a fifth wheel um, on up. And and I look, you know, I even looked at some of those road treks, the little Class Bs, and uh, oh my gosh, those things are expensive. <laughs> Duh. And uh, uh, that's just the numbers aren't going to work for us on that. So, but I was kind of hoping to you know trade in and downsize and actually maybe. You know, we have a you know we financed ours, so it'd be nice to see the numbers. You know, our monthly number drop, and uh, of course, you know, you you always get kind of underwater on RVs. So I don't know how that's going to turn out. I'll kind of let you know as we get educated in that. But I'd like to get a. But I'm noticing. I'm looking at new that um, their show prices were around uh, from forty nine to sixty nine is something. Uh, th you know, thousand dollars seems to be something we'd be comfortable in. Uh, of course, I could try to find a used one that's maybe a year old or something like that, and probably save some significant funds. So uh, that's kind of what we did on the last RV. Because it's funny how people will buy this stuff and trade them in. You know, ten months later, and, you, know, you know, some people can do that. But yeah, there's bargains to be had when that happens. So yeah, we'll be looking at that. But yeah, I'm not seeing. I was. I, I would have liked a trailer, and I may still go towards a trailer because it's significantly a cost savings to go with a trailer. But um, I don't know. It just seems like it'd be for one week jaunts or two week jaunts, and maybe we shoot up to Central Oregon, go visit family or something like that. To have a little Class C um, and keeping it simple would be kind of nice instead of lugging around a trailer. But and uh, I don't know. We'll see. I'm getting worried, yeah. Um, I've kind of talked about this before and I'm gonna extend it out a little bit more, but um, first of all, you gotta, for those of you who know me, you can kind of tell that I'm kind of old school a little bit, And but I've tried to modify and try to kind of get, you know, in with the uh, <laughs> current, current way of doing things. And so I've had more of a traditional family, you know, kind of the leave it the beaver kind of thing. Like, honey, I'm home and wife cooks dinner. But but we've never had that scenario. My wife's always worked, so have I. But now I'm home because, uh, you know, I retired last year. And so, you know, and then you know that we bought a house. So we're in a house now. And I, during the 18 months of traveling and stuff, I uh, definitely learned I had to cut the mustard a little better. And, and so, guys, you're going to laugh. Women, you're going to just crack up on this because uh, I'm changing. Oh, my God. Here I am this age, and I it can be done. <laughs> so, so, women on this show, you'll laugh but be happy. At the same time, guys, you're going to be mad at me because uh, you think I'm getting soft. So, yeah, it's happening. So, what's happened, especially in the RV, is helping more because you know uh i always do the guy kind of stuff and that was kind of my justification for life but uh you know with sherry working and me home it's like well besides making the videos and the radio shows uh i gotta kind of start cooking dinner a little bit more or uh doing dishes more and kind of you know vacuuming once in a while and, and calling the so my first thing i got to tell you guys if you ever buy a house or if you already have a house Guys, if you want to look like you're really doing good on one thing, you want to make, like, one is vacuuming. We have 1,700 square feet here, so that's a lot of vacuuming. And luckily, we have a lot of tile floors. That's how it is in Arizona. 
So we bought a Roomba, one of those iRobot um, vacuums. Guys, if you're going to be home and your wife wants you to kind of take care of the house a little bit, take the money and buy one of those. <laughs> so, And so uh, I don't know how many times I joke with my wife on I'm, yeah, I'm vacuuming the house. I've been vacuuming all day. <laughs> and she's like, you dork. Because <laughs> all you have to do is push a button and the little machine starts running around the house. And so I, can, I love that thing. So anyway, but that's not what I'm here talking about. So uh, the other thing is, uh, yes, I've been doing, and we have a dishwasher now, so that's really nice. But uh, I have, you know, I'm trying to be more of taking care of the house because I am retired. And uh, my wife is a very happy camper. <laughs> so, you know, after 36 years of marriage, going on 37, uh, guys, you got to keep working at it. And so um, the big thing that's really, really changed for me <laughs> is cooking. Now, when I was in the RV, I'd cook like spaghetti and I do things like sauerkraut and capasa. I love those. And uh, um, some basic things I'd cook for dinners. And I did those because it was kind of uh, lasagna sometimes. I'd get the pre-made ones. And so it was really, that wasn't really cooking. It was more like just throwing it in the oven. But the best thing that ever happened in our life is buying my Traeger. <laughs> my, it was, if you know what a Traeger is, it's a, it's a grill. But it's like a smoking, smoker and oven grill. It's all in one amazing machine. And we bought ours at Costco. They're not cheap. I, 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 I had to save my allowance. And I dreamed about getting one of these for almost a year because I saw you can get smaller versions of triggers uh, that are uh, what they call the junior, that the full, uh, legs fold down stuff in there. You are quite capable of carrying one on an RV. But uh, I, I didn't. I decided I was going to wait till I got to a house because I really wanted. I really like making jerky and smoke things and stuff like that. And I have a smoker, and it's stored away up in Washington. It's a, one of those big smoke smoker craft type um i think it, I, that's a boat actually <laughs> but uh um it's a big one and it works really good but uh it was too big to take in the rv so anyway here's to take the story far there's two things i want to talk about here one is cooking two is shopping <laughs> and so i know this is a guy it's rob yes it really is rob talking here okay so cooking my wife actually is loving it because i've been making and you saw something you know if you watch our channel i've actually made a couple of videos about cooking with the traeger and some recipes i'm using and some i've always had and uh i think this week uh one's coming out for making jerky um no pulled pork so, yeah isn't that terrible so i'm i've been making we have not starved and then when before I like like at the end of the week or beginning of the week, I like to cook a whole chicken. Which, by the way, I got chicken for sixty seven cents a pound. <laughs> it's just the fact that I'm talking like this is like, oh my god, Rob, is that really you? If you're an old friend of mine and stuff, they're gonna say this is not this is not the real Rob. Yes, it is. So anyway, so I uh, I was able to get whole chicken, sixty seven cents a pound at Safeway and it was just a weird day that they had all these chickens and I mean whole size good size chickens that were averaging 350 each so I bought a couple of them because it's like that's a really good deal and so uh we'll talk more about that in a minute but the Traeger is causing me to cook almost like I'm obsessed with it in fact it's almost to a point my wife's going uh we haven't finished the pulled pork yet why did you make ribs <laughs> it's like oops sorry <laughs> i was excited to make them <laughs> and, uh my neighbor's loving me because i'm just you know hey get, you want some pulled pork hey you want some ribs hey <laughs> and uh, uh i have a really nice neighbor so he's got some tools and stuff i don't have right now because all my stuff you know like that is up in washington so it's it's a great bartering you know tool you know, a little bit of really good food for a little bit of 
help with some tools or something like that. Anyway, so that's my first shocker. So guy, girls or women, if your guy shows sign that they kind of like doing barbecuing and grilling, the best thing you could ever buy for them is something like or actually buy a Traeger. Um, they are awesome. And maybe you can get a good deal on one through Craigslist or something like that. But, um, but yeah, they are kind of pricey. But uh, I can tell you that my wife would say I'd do it again over and over. Because <laughs> it's totally changed the uh, way things are processes with our family as far as me and Sherry. As she comes home and acts like, and it's kind of nice because I always have some food done. That one is we're eating dinner earlier, which is a good habit to get into. And two, uh, we're actually eating better, I think, because I'll put emphasis on more vegetables and fruits. That, yes, I've been preparing fruit, cutting fruits up, doing all these things that I knew, always knew, knew how to do, but. Now I kind of want to do them. So, <laughs> so, that, so once again, women out there are going, oh, that's what you, maybe guys now do that all the time, but um, the watch Rob change to be more domestic, domesticated <laughs> is a shock, but a good thing. And so Sherry's very happy. But once again, there's another thing I want to talk about. I just can't put enough emphasis on is how to save money. So I figure since I'm not working like she is nine to five, uh, I have my stuff I, I got, and but I can manipulate it a lot is uh, the least thing I can do is try to save us some money. So you've heard me talk about my Safeway app and my gosh, that is the most awesome thing. The other thing I've gaining ground on is fuel points. So if you shop at Safeway or Fry's or I think Albertsons and some of these other, I'm not sure what Bashers does. Um, you really should get into, if they have an app, to put it on your phone. And then there's a few things you have to do. You actually, just because you have the app doesn't mean you're going to save money. You need to go in and the coupons will be in there and you just push on, 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 on. And if you have a, a card like Safeway, that transmits uh, to your card automatically. So you don't have to have all these coupons. However, when you check out, you ever notice you get this big piece of paper of all of your stuff. And then you get this you know, big transcript of these little coupons. And I always just kind of shrug them off. Now I've been looking at it, I'm going, whoa, I can save five bucks on Purina, you know, dog food. Or if I spend $10 or more on dog food or dog stuff, I get five bucks off. I'm going, dang. So I actually, in some cases, I feel like I spend more. But in the long run, I am saving a lot of money on just little things, uh, especially like pet food and stuff like that. Those coupons they give you at the end when you check out, take a good look at those, throw them in your wallet, and if you're on a regular basis going to the grocery store, you can save some considerable money. The other thing is like in Costco, we actually changed our membership from the $50 membership to the $100 executive thing because you get 2%. Because we bought a house down here, we've been buying a lot of big ticket items like televisions and things like that. Um, you'll get 2% back, which you have to really th analyze that because we may go back to the 50 over time when we're done buying big ticket items. Um, but this year I know that there'll be a lot more of it because of the house. So I know I'll get my $100 back through the 2% plus and I'll get a check basically, I believe, at uh, in uh, November, October time, time frame. So that's another way to save some money. The next thing I've been doing is the fuel points is because I'm not driving the truck as much. Poor thing. My babies are sitting out there all lonesome. But the maximum discount that I can get from Safeway is a hundred dollars, um, hundred dollars, a dollar off. You know, you get these fuel points 
once you, and I'm actually at a dollar seventy dollar seventy. Well, when you go to the pump, they only allow me to use a dollar of it. Now with the truck, I need to make sure that it's almost empty so I can get all 25 gallons. So we don't use this on the Mazda, but the problem I'm having now is I'm not driving the truck as much. So uh, um, we literally last weekend said, let's do, let's go for a couple rides so I can get my fuel tank down to where I can at least hold 25 gallons so I can get uh, take advantage of my discount. And I did, and I got a diesel for a dollar fifty nine uh and I could do better if I didn't go to a Chevron if I go to an actual Safeway gas station, I probably could do better than that so but yeah, that's for diesel dollar fifty nine it was pretty nice <laughs> so anyway um uh the next thing I wanted to tell you about was I just discovered how to use the new app from Target. So I know a lot of you guys still use Target. There's other stores too, like the Walmarts and stuff. I haven't used those yet. But, you know, uh, to get educated in this stuff and change with the times is really what we're talking about here, is uh, you got to kind of pick up on this stuff. So we're in Target, and we're just going to get a couple things, and a couple things turned out to be, you know, more than a couple things so i knew we have over a hundred dollars worth of stuff in our cart and so i know i i put the app on my phone but i've never really used it it's one thing that you know, it's kind of like keeping coupons and not using them while you not using the apps is the same problem so here's what i learned so luckily it was kind of later in the evening and there was a really nice young lady there working and think you know, was good thing uh, this is where the millennials really kind of like make you feel like an idiot I said, you know, I'm trying to use, does, this, does your guys' app really save us any money? She goes, oh, yeah. She pulls out her phone and um, turns out I had the wrong app. I had the Target. There's a Target app, but there's also one called the uh, Target's, um, let me check one more time. I believe it's Target's Cartwheel is what it's called, which is different. And how that works is you carry this thing around with your phone and and some people go well you go in those stores the internet doesn't work very well well you got to connect to the target internet that's the first thing i learned so i got connected and sh she used her phone to save me some money but the way it goes is you hit this button that's that's basically like your camera and it scans the barcode on the product and if there's a sale on it it will identify it and then when you're done shopping, all the things that you identified, you say take the you know move the cart, and it creates a, a another barcode that you have them scan at the check stand, and all the discounts that are on those products will be applied to your um, what you're purchasing. It's like well, sh dang, <laughs> so the gal used her phone, and I had maybe nine items, and she took her phone, and each one she held the barcode to, scanned it, and then she found like three things, like Sherry bought some shampoos, and there's, you don't see it when you buy it, but there was 10% off on both of her shampoos. But you wouldn't have known that when you bought it without this thing. And then we bought some uh, cat litter too, and that was on sale, or well, had a discount code on it. So the gal, just in a short little time, without us being real scientific, saves me and Sherry at least five dollars on our purchase and I don't care what you say anytime you can save some money awesome so um, if you're old school like me I'm telling you it's time to change a little bit and catch up with some of this stuff now um, other stores have other apps and so it's my responsibility to start saying okay if I'm going to Walmart can that app actually save me some money? And the answer is probably yes. Uh, I can tell you that the Safeway card saves me. In fact, I spent, um, for example, when I went to um, Safeway, I wanted to buy ribs for my Traeger. It turns out I could get ribs, buy one, get three free. Can you believe that? So it's like $21 for some pork ribs. And so... 
it's really important that whatever you buy, make sure you get like the ribs go up to $30. So if I bought like a couple of ribs and they all average like $20, $25 and my last one I pick is like $31, I will be paying the $31 for the four sets of ribs. So what you want to do is like, all right, pull all the ribs that are all valued around whatever you want it to be. I kind of shot for around $24. So all the ribs I got was $24 or less uh, each one. So when I paid up front, I only paid $24 for the most expensive one. The other three were free. <laughs> that was like a, right there alone, $70 savings. So on top of that, I had my app, which before I went into the store, made sure all my coupons were turned on. And it doesn't mean I have to buy anything that I put in my coupons. It's just, it's there. And so... And then last but not least, I told you on first of every Wednesday, first Wednesday of every month is senior day. So if you're over 55, you can get, I believe it's I'm not, it's 10 percent off. So yesterday I spent eighty nine dollars in groceries and saved ninety three dollars, not to mention I also got a times two thing on my, uh, there was a coupon if I spent so much money that uh, um, I'd get, oh, if I bought some produce, which I did, I bought some strawberries and some salad stuff and all that stuff, I would get a 2X or times two, um, two points on my fuel discount, which is awesome. <laughs> so I know, <laughs> it's like, this can't be Rob. <laughs> it is, it's, I can't. I don't know why I'm getting into this so much, but it's now it's getting to be kind of the cool thing to do. And my wife is like, I'm not, my wife won't say a thing because she's like, I am not messing with this. Like Rob is becoming quite the, uh, the shopper cost savings. And he's, and we're trying to, and Sherry can be, when we buy some furniture down here, she did some good negotiations to save us some big bucks. And, uh, Oh, dear Lord, you just, uh, I can't emphasize enough, especially if you're traveling and get back to the RV stuff here, learning how to use these apps, even at our age and up is important and you need to take the time to do it. They're not that hard. And some people, I know you guys just shrug this stuff off. I don't understand this technology stuff. The thing is, is, they're ripping you off. It's almost like a game. And uh, uh, they're kind of counting on us, people like us, not using this stuff. But they're there. There is good marketing to have us use those apps and come in and buy things. So there's, it's good one way and it's good another. It's good as some people don't use the app because then they don't get the discounts and they come in and buy stuff anyway. And then there's those who do use the app that really can save some money. And then look at this. I'm advertising Target. <laughs> and I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not sponsored by Safeway um, or Traeger or anything. When you have a good product or have a good system, you want to tell the world. And that's good. And so as I discover how I'd like to use Walmarts and then Costco's got a it, they got an app, but it doesn't necessarily, uh, we haven't seen where it was really saving us money, but it's kind of nice to, if you monitor Costco, you can find when they're having special weekends on certain things that you might be interested in. For example, when we bought our big television for the house, we took advantage of the Super Bowl week where they had large uh, 65 inch flat screen, uh, 4K uh, smart television uh, on sale and got a really good price because it was Super Bowl weekend and so without the app we wouldn't have noticed that and when I bought my Traeger they had you can't really get a Traeger at a discount but you can get a Traeger with lots of toys so the Costco version which is a unique version of the Traeger you'll be able to get like covers and some uh, um, recipe books and some uh, spices and uh, some w one uh, bag of uh, pellets that you can try out uh, all with the deal. So you don't, s you don't save any money on the actual product, but you save money by getting extra gifts with your Traeger. That'll save you a little bit of money. And that's what 
we found that app has turned out to really be nice to have. And I'm hoping when I'm passing on to, and it's not just guys, but you know, guys, we got to get better at this stuff. And if you're old school like me, we're probably the worst, but I'm converting and, uh, um, uh, I don't know how to explain it. I'm enjoying it. And plus having the time to, or making the time I'll say, uh, to learn this stuff it's saving our family lots of money, which is just as good as having a job uh, or extra job beyond my pension to help save our household money. And if you're traveling, uh, and, you know, and you got a tight budget, these are ways to save money significantly. And I'm not talking about buying things in quantity. It's f being informed and having these electronic tools to let you know when there's good prices on certain items that you like. And what's nice about the Safeway one is it starts customizing itself to what you buy because uh, it keeps track. You just got to make sure that your phone is connected to the um, uh, store that you're shopping at. So when you're traveling, it's going to be important if you stick with like Safeway. So whatever stores you're using that I think you're going to have to make sure that you change the address in your app so it applies to the store that you're currently at, especially if you're traveling. So need to know that. But I'm telling you, this is significant. This is important. This is a way to save money while you're traveling. And uh, uh, it's good for your household, good for your budget. Yes, just as a reminder, I need to take the time to say that we're sponsored by goodmusicradio.com, which is an internet radio station that runs 24-7. Very little talk, very little commercials. Uh, it's basically uh, greatest hits of past and present. Just a fun radio station to listen to. Get a, uh, if you get a chance, just go to goodmusicradio.com. You can listen to it straight from your PC, or you can download a free app to listen to it anytime you want. As long as you have internet, it doesn't matter what state you're in. You can listen to good music radio, and that's a cool thing. If you like the station, you can hear it in Washington. You can hear it in Arizona. You can hear it in New York. You can hear it in uh, any country, too, uh, my understanding. Well, many countries. And so, uh, yeah, it's a pretty neat situation. Um, lots of fun. Uh, if you have a product or service you'd like to put on it, let us know. Just um, And you can, uh, the show too, We, if you have a product or service you're interested in putting on the show, let us know. Uh, we have, um, I notice our listeners are increasing and uh, it's just been really wonderful. We appreciate that. And uh, once again, you can always contact me directly at rob at RV Talk Radio. And you can either just go to RV Talk Radio website, go to the contact page and talk to us there. Or you can go to our Facebook page, either at RV Talk Radio has their own Facebook page. Or you can go to uh, RV Travel Buddy, a trademark of Cutting Edge Enterprises, which you can uh, contact us and talk to us there if you have some product or service you're interested in advertising. And, uh, or we'd just like to hear from you. And so don't hesitate to leave comments. If you have something negative to say, all we ask is that you be professional. And uh, yeah, we're open to change if there's something you don't like. But uh, please, we always want to remind you that we're, uh, we stay with the RV lifestyles and the different types of way that people use their RV. We're not so much into RV tips and, 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 and repairs and stuff as we are is is in the lifestyle and, and of course we get the surprises of equipment and products that we like to pass on that are kind of fun but it's also personal rv talk radio is designed to be kind of just becoming friends with the people that we listen to we're not pushing a lot of products we're not pushing books we're not pushing a um, Patreon or, or things like that. You can donate to our show by just going to the website and just use a PayPal thing there. It goes straight into uh, uh, the support uh, what we do. Uh, we are a corporation, so anything you do donate gets re you know recorded properly. We pay taxes, the whole work. So we do appreciate that. So anyway, uh, uh, yeah, don't hesitate to contact us. Don't hesitate to check out Good Music Radio. We certainly appreciate it and it's part of our uh, 
overall corporation. So yeah, we appreciate that. I also wanted to thank the one gal that left a note uh, saying that she uh, had issues with diverticulitis. We were talking about that a little bit last week. I was telling you how me not taking PMs anymore um, at night seemed to help with not irritating that situation. And and and, um, but she was saying that it's definitely something you want to take serious. And yes, <laughs> nobody takes it more serious than I do. But uh, yeah. Any time that you uh, discover things that are healthier and better for your lifestyle in the RV world, uh, pass it on. We'll pass it on to others too. So, yeah, uh, great stuff. And um, one of the last things I wanted to talk about is one of the things I've been learning that really shocked me was uh, about our RV and our boat. And it had to do with uh, I'm now starting to, you know, get work on the boat getting it making sure it's ready for the summer and so it's in our yard and i want to fire up the engines well i know that my uh, batteries can get kind of weak uh, over time they were shut down and so uh, engine number one i was able to fire up just fine but engine number two uh, pulls a little bit more amperage on the starter and it just needs a little bit and so either the starter's starting to wear out or or i got something I need to I don't address I'm not sure what it is but so in order to charge the batteries instead of using a trickle charger the boat has a uh, built-in charging system so I thought okay I'll just plug shore power and get an adapter and just plug into the 110 and turn on the charger so it's like I shouldn't have any trouble going from 30 amp to 110 and so turns out guess what they're not the same RVs and boat cords for 30 amp, and I don't know about the 50 amp because I don't have that. Uh, the plugs are different. And if you look like uh, in a 30 amp, you'll notice it has straight prongs. Well, guess what? The boats have those little L shape um, prongs in it. And so to do the same thing, the absolutely the same thing that you would do with an RV when you need like you're trying to get like 20 amps or 15 amps from a house, uh, you have to be careful when you do that. I mean, you can't run anything; you'll be popping circuits. But uh, uh, like when we go visit Sherry's folks, we go to their house and we plug into their 110 outlet with my adapter, so at least I can have lights and I can watch television. I can't run an air conditioner, and I. Uh, if I shut everything down, I can run a microwave, but I have to be really careful how I uh, regulate my power. But anyway, I went to go use my RV adapters and don't work. And of course, I go driving all over trying to find an adapter from 30 amp to a 15 amp with the little L-shaped prong in it. Couldn't find it. And I even went to a boat dealer and I said, oh, I can order you one for a hundred. And I was like, no, 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 no. Anyway, I did find the adapter on uh, Amazon for about $19. And so that goes from the 30 amp to a 110 with the l shape prong in it. And uh, so, in fact, I get that today. And so I can <laughs> finish my project of firing up my second engine and... Uh, Uh, Just making sure everything's running good and get the lubricants kind of running and all that good stuff. And um, Because we're about two months away from putting the boat up at Lake Powell up in Page, Arizona. And we'll leave it up there for about four months. But yeah, that was quite the education of... I just... It just makes me mad. I have to go buy the exact same thing that I have for my RV for the boat to do the same thing that I need to do. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> the world's against us, people. I'm telling you. <laughs> but yep, I got it. We we figured it out. But yeah, I thought I'd just pass that on. If you own a boat and you think some of your adapters are going to work from your RV, look again. Uh, I think you might be surprised. Well, golly, looks like we're getting towards the end of the show here, and I want to. Once again, thank you very much for listening. I would also like to welcome all the new listeners. Uh, once again, I just kind of put emphasis that we're kind of uh, RV lifestyles, not just my way, but um, all the different ways people use RVs, and we get kind of fascinated over that. We also always try to pass on common sense things to you and stuff and try to get rid of some 
myths or uh, beliefs that are out there that um, just to open, keep everybody's mind open. So uh, anyway, and we try to stay fairly neutral in some things, but sometimes, uh, you know, uh, the old age kind of <laughs> gets in the way. But I hope you learned today that this is a great opportunity to learn how to shop a little different to ways to save some money and uh, how to enjoy RVing and uh, anytime you can save a few bucks, it's important. And uh, anyway, and I want to thank everybody for all the nice comments and think, and uh, um, keeping in touch with us. We really do appreciate that. So uh, till next week, uh, please, like I said, take the time to say hello. Don't hesitate to send comments to us. Don't hesitate to contact us on Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. So I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Thank you for listening. And if you own an RV or anything that you're doing, all I ask is try to be safe and hopefully your travels will go well. So we'll talk to you next week. Bye now. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to RV Talk Radio. Please take the time to subscribe and listen to some of our previous shows. We appreciate you.